So long story less long, Russell Brand tried to preempt it and it didn't really work to be fair. It made him look way more guilty. And I just think he maybe could have gone about this a different way. But again, you know, he's he's backed into a corner. He doesn't know what's actually going to be in the documentary in full. But he's aware of some of the stuff that he's done. And maybe he's not aware because it happened so long ago. Who knows? But I thought he, his, his sort of like preemptive response was pretty terrible. And then married that up to the actual documentary itself. It made him look really, really bad. But this is Russell Brand is basically saying, hey, be, don't be don't be scared. I didn't do it. Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Now, this isn't the usual type of video we make on this channel where we critique, attack, and undermine the news in all its corruption, because in this story, I am the news. I've received two extremely disturbing letters, or a letter and an email, one from a mainstream media TV company, one from a newspaper listing a litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks, as well as some pretty stupid stuff, like uh, my community festival should be stopped, that I shouldn't be able to attack mainstream media narratives on this channel. But amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question is there another agenda at play? Particularly when we've seen coordinated media attacks before, like with Joe Rogan, when he dared to take a medicine that the mainstream media didn't approve of. And we saw a spate of headlines from media outlets across the world using the same language. I'm aware that you guys have been saying in the comments for a while, watch out, Russell, they're coming for you. You're getting too close to the truth. Russell Brand did not kill himself. I know that a year ago there was a spate of articles. Russell Brand's a conspiracy theorist. Russell Brand's right wing. I'm aware of news media making phone calls, sending letters to people I know for ages and ages. It's been clear to me, or at least it feels to me, like there's a serious and concerted agenda to control these kind of spaces and these kind of voices. And I mean my voice along with your voice. I don't mind them using my books and my stand-up to talk about my promiscuous consensual conduct in the past. What I seriously refute are these very, very serious criminal allegations. Also, it's worth mentioning that there are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. Now, I don't want to get into this any further because of the serious nature of the allegations, but I feel like I'm being attacked and plainly they are working very closely together. We are obviously going to look into this matter because it's very, very serious. In the meantime, I want you to stay close, stay awake, but more important than any of that, if you can, please stay free. I understand how nervous it could be if you think you're innocent to kind of... I understand how nervous it could be if you think you're not guilty of the things you've been accused of and you see your whole entire livelihood going down in flames. I can understand the need to kind of come out of this, but I feel like when those allegations are of that level of severity, you kind of have to deal with them with some, with some, with some hint of grace, with some level of contrition. Like you have to come out a little bit more understanding i know sometimes it can get a little bit dicey when you do that because it could be a form of you essentially admitting guilt but i feel like there should be a way to kind of word these sort of statements where it doesn't sound like you are trying to make excuses or you're trying to blame the mainstream media for t trying to take you down because you speak the truth it's like it's a bit odd both things can be right maybe there is a concerted effort to sort of like drown out his voice because he's getting too close to the truth okay cool maybe but it also could be a legit um concern or legit worry or legit upset or legit pain caused by your previous behavior and you should be adult enough and man enough to kind of admit that hit that head on first and say i'm sorry and then after the documentary drops you can do all this sort of like conspiracy theory shit i think that would have been a better kind of course 
to go about doing this sort of stuff. You drop the first half of the statement, then then you have a half the statement when it comes out, say, hey, I feel like this is a concerted effort to kind of, you know, um, drown me out because of what I'm saying and the truth I'm speaking and I'm getting too close to the truth and these mainstream media pundits don't like it and my platform does X amount of views, which is more than this whole network does. All the stuff that these guys always love to say, you can say that after the fact, but in the moment when people are concerned and worried and whatever it may be, or, you know, the fact that it kind of how it makes you look, you probably do owe the people involved an opportunity or you do owe the, the people involved just a bit of an apology to kind of at least sound like you're up you know you're you're kind of um sorry for the pain that you may have caused in the past and not try and paint it all as you know 100 percent okay consensual relationships and in interactions because obviously they weren't unfortunately when it comes to relationships when it comes to sexual interactions or any kind of sort it always involves another person so in that case, there is no real certainty in your mind unless that person tells you directly, right? That it's always 100% fine. The other person may have issues with it. Maybe they might not bring it up to you, but their issues and their feelings are valid. Just because you don't feel that way doesn't mean it kind of invalidates what they're feeling. And depending on what's happened, if they feel like they're owed an apology, it's up to you to decide if you want to give them an apology, but they, they're probably, you know, they're probably right to feel like they do. Then I want to talk about the trailer that kind of speaks about a little bit of the documentary. Um, you know, it's, it's, I wouldn't really call it a trailer because it's flipping nine minutes long, but it at least gives an overview of what you could kind of heap, lead to expect in this whole Dispatches documentary channel. For If you can find it online, if you're some of my international listeners, please try and find it. Um, I'm sure somebody will end up uploading onto YouTube. If not, then this trailer or this little clip gives you a brief idea of what they're kind of speaking about in the documentary. And then I'll go into reading the article from the Times that kind of breaks it down a bit more. I like to have it off, right? <laughs> As sort of, right? Yeah, why not? Yeah, that's cheesy idea of sex. Sex, the love of it, the dogged, unashamed pursuit of it, Russell Brand's thing. I'm really crap at this, aren't I? You're lovely, you're fine. Just go with it. Don't try and fight it. I have to say that every day. <laughs> the core of his act, an act which made him one of Britain's best-known comedians and actors. What I do is I make absolutely sure that it is a woman, then <laughs> go for it. It saw him become the host of Channel 4's Big Brother spin-off. Welcome to Big Brother's E Forum. One of the stars of BBC Radio. It even took him to Hollywood. Now tonight, off stage, it sees him accused of rape, sexual assault, controlling and abusive behaviour. Uncovered in a major investigation by Channel 4 Dispatches, The Times and The Sunday Times. The real issue he has here, I think, aside, you know, the real issue, you know, no one wants to be accused of what he's been accused of. But I think the really one thing that's going to hurt is the rape. The controlling and abusive behaviour, I think, you'd be an absolute ignoramus to think someone like a Russell Brand is a good boyfriend, is a catch. It's not likely, right? Um, the only the only kind of experience that we've probably had of him being a catch or being seen as a prize from the outside looking in was maybe his marriage to Katy Perry, right? And they kind of broke up on weird terms. I think there's a documentary actually of her. Um, I think it's part of her tour. It's a brutal clip where she's in the changing room and she sees she gets a text from Russell basically saying he wants to divorce her. Um, which is flipping crazy and she films the whole entire thing and she's you know one minute crying and sobbing that her marriage is ending and next minute she has to go on stage and perform to this sold out crowd who has no idea what's going on in the background and that's the only time I remember it kind of seeming like you know the woman was more cut up about it leaving yeah no like it was never really a it was never really intimated that he was a creep back then she just seemed heartbroken to lose her partner or her husband at that time so the one thing that's going to hurt him more I think is a rape because everybody knows he's been a douchebag he's been a creep he's not going to be a good boyfriend you know he is what kind of he is whatever it may be he's kind of like you know Andrew Tate before Andrew Tate but the rape is going to be the one that's really going to hurt because that's going to really make you look wild because once you know it's hard to imagine somebody just raping somebody one time you know people are going to start looking into it more trying to find out more details and maybe uncovering more people and I'm sure these documentaries or these pieces they have a they have a tendency to kind of give other victims um you know the courage to come out so there's going to be other people coming out there might be people clout chasing or just coming out because they want to be part of the conversation but either way it's going to make it worse you know that one sort of like alarm bell like hold on he raped somebody you're like oof because even the stuff about him allegedly being in a relationship with a girl who's 16 
it's happened to rock stars and people that kind of have that kind of image have been doing that since forever. Do you know what I mean? You don't want to read some of the books on some of our kind of legendary rock stars to see the kind of girls that they were dating back in the day, even stand up comedians. It's a, it's a thing that happened and that people kind of let slide even back then and don't really talk about too much now for whatever reason, the 16 and the flipping being a bad boyfriend thing. He, he could probably skirt away from that, but rape. Oof, it's going to be a tough, tough, tough year for you, bro. He's grabbing at my my underwear, pulling it to the side. I'm telling him to get off me, and he won't get off. Like, holding me up against the wall, pushing himself in me. It's based on the testimony of five women who agreed to share their stories. Actors have been used in some cases, and in others, voices have been changed. The allegations are from the early noughties until 2013. Brand's risque stand-up routine, a huge success on the comedy circuit, he then got his big break on television, joining Channel 4's Big Brother spin-off show. Why, hello there! The programme was a huge moneymaker for production company Endemol and critical to the channel's existence. Series 5 generating £45 million in advertising revenue alone. Brand... You see, that's a thing. That's a little bit of a weird thing to kind of see happening in real time, right? They're saying it's allegations from the the noughts, the late 90s to the early 2000, so 2013. So the question needs to be said, should you be exposing and revealing somebody's very checkered and very, very heinous past if they've made amends, if they try to kind of correct course? Because so far, we what, he's married, right? He's got kids. He's kind of gone down a whole completely different path. He's not part of the mainstream media anymore. He's doing his own YouTube podcast thing. I think he's even on Rumble or something. So he's on the proper fringes of content creation, right? I don't think he gets promoted on the algorithm, probably not because of the stuff he speaks about. So he's really kind of minding his own business. Um, maybe that doesn't mean he's changed as a person. He maybe still is raping and, you know, molesting people, not molesting people, raping and harassing people and whatever, being a fiend that he was before. But all indications points to him being somewhat of a changed man because i remember that's the thing that i kind of liked when i heard him on the joe rogan experience many years ago i think it might have been 2016 or something one of the first appearances and he was really good on there right when he first started coming about this whole like you know what was it russell brand 5.0 because he's had many chances right this is the one thing i think actually the documentary that kind of pissed me off i was like you know what white like that whole white privilege thing especially in media it's true man it's real I don't think you're going to get any other media person, especially a presenter, a host, a comedian or whatever he is, right? That gets as many second chances as Russell Brand got. He got so many Russ second chances after complaints, you know, like, and, and this is not even him like doing anything physically to these people this is just him being a fucking pest like harassing and making lewd comments about people that he works with on air and stuff and for most people you'd get fired on the spot like he just got chance after chance after chance after chance so whatever what i was going back to saying is that if the person's made amends and they try to correct course in with their lives and they t they're doing it in real time and you're seeing it happen in front of your eyes should you now be turning around in 2023 and trying to basically cancel that person is that really right? I don't really know, right? That's like, what, 10 years on from when it happened? Should you be now going on and trying to cancel them when they haven't done the thing that you said they did before in more than 10 years? I know it can get dicey in terms of what the allegations are, but that's the only bit that kind of is a bit of a, huh, I wonder why they decided to do it now. And if you listen to this clip even more, you'll see that, I think they even mentioned this, that once you watch the documentary, you'll witness that, it wasn't just him being a monster, which he clearly is. I think that's something I've said before about the Harvey Weinstein documentaries and stuff when they came out. The thing that hurt the most watching those documentaries for the victims was the amount of people who turned a blind eye to what was happening. Because you have so many people online now who are using the whole, oh, it's, an in it's a well-kept secret as a way to kind of flex that they're part of the industry that this stuff was happening, that Russell Brand was a menace behind the scenes. I don't think that's something to gloat about. You shouldn't feel like 
proud about yourself that you know this insider secret because you weren't willing and brave enough to step out and sort of like you know call this stuff out when it was happening especially if you had the information especially if you were near to it and you had evidence or you had first-hand accounts second-hand accounts you didn't say nothing in public you didn't call it out you didn't sound the alarm you just were part of the people that gossiped about it behind the scenes and then kept it quiet and then the powers that be saw him getting all the ratings and kept giving him jobs so in a way the people that turned a blind eye and didn't report this or didn't speak about it on air on public or air him out are somewhat complicit in what he did or what you were able to get away with and it's funny isn't it when you're famous you can get with you can literally get away with murder it goes back to that whole quote donald trump um said at that time when he was um running he was like oh if i went to times square and shot somebody i'd be all right he's probably true it's probably true it's a bit of a wild statement to make but it's probably true his sycophants um his celebrity his fame his money it would probably you know get him to a point where he might get off on a on that being manslaughter or self-defense or a misdemeanor or probably won't spend a day in jail that's how crazy it gets for celebrities and became the star of the spin-off debate show big brothers e forum within weeks of starting the job Brand was focusing his attention on a new young runner. It was only one of my first jobs. I was a runner. There was a, a real sense for me of being the baby and wanting to make an impression on everybody. I think I must have gone to see what he wanted for lunch and he saw that it was me and he turned around towards me. I wasn't incredibly close to him, but I saw that he had his penis out of his shorts or trousers and it was in his hands. I wasn't going to tell anyone what he'd done because I didn't want to lose my job. They later began a consensual sexual relationship. With hindsight and now as an older woman, I can say with clarity that, you know, I felt like I was groomed. This is the one thing that I despise, this thing that creeps usually do. I think, especially with someone like a Russell Brand, you have all the options in the world. You have, uh, and it, uh, uh, probably even till this day, he probably has, you know, hordes of women, consenting adult women who'd be more than happy to get their backs blown out by him more than happy to have him shove his fucking cock down their throats and make them gag more than happy to have them to have you have them bent over the back of a bin somewhere banging them in an alleyway more than happy for all that stuff to happen they fucking love it why then go over cross the line and start to abuse your crew members and stuff or people within your team i've never understood that that's the thing that always kind of got on my nerves because i remember hearing that same thing about harvey weinstein um him kind of basically abusing cleaners and maids and all this stuff it's like bro you can't it's, it's not enough being a monster to people you work with in the industry like your your colleagues people who are trying to get up that greasy entertainment ladder and you do some dicey things you try to exchange you know sexual favors for career you know progression which is awful but you know you're two consenting adults and you try to do that all right whatever it's gross it's disgusting and you should still be in jail for it because you're an animal but then going further than that and trying to, you know, cross the line with people that are just working a job, right? They just want to make a living, just want to go back to their families. And here you are disturbing their peace, being a menace, leaving them with, irre in, you know, irreversible emotional and physical scars like this lady. She got into a relationship with the guy afterwards, but still later down the line is sitting there thinking, rah, did I get groomed? I kind of regret what happened here. Do you know what I mean? This is the pain you're leaving these people with because they're not stars. They're not fucking, you know, they don't want to be celebrities and shit. They just work a fucking job and you, you know, basically influence and impact their lives like this and leave them with these scars, leave them to pick up this baggage and then you just kind of swan off into the flipping sunset and go and live your life. That's the thing that kind of really irks me the most when I see these sort of things. Like, keep your scum shit to the people involved in your scum industry, but don't let it touch people that are just trying to work a job. It's already bad anyway, all of it, but it's just re touching regular people is just horrendous because they don't get, they don't, they don't get anything from it. You know, they just get left with the flipping damage and the hurt and stuff. They get used and abused, basically, for lack of a better term. And then sometimes it doesn't even transpire into a career projection, career pro progression, sorry. You're still in the same position you are before. Um, for sex. Anarchy in the Big Brother house. But it's not just testimony from the women themselves. 
other junior Endemol crew members who worked with Brand on other shows agreed to tell their stories too. Russell was pointing out women that he found attractive in the audience and then getting the runners to get their details so that they could meet up after the show. It felt like we were essentially taking lambs into slaughter. Junior crew members on Big Brother's e-forum say they made complaints about his behaviour. I don't know whether that complaint went any higher than our production management team. It was definitely met with, OK, well, that's not OK. I don't know if anybody spoke to Russell. The behaviour didn't stop. See, junior members made, some, made a stink about it. Junior members who had no say-so, who had no real weight, they're the ones that made a stink about it. But the senior people involved in there who knew probably what was going on, they probably just swept under the rug. It's all right. Boys will be boys. Rock stars will be rock stars. That's where I say everybody was somewhat complicit in what he did. He's still the monster, don't get me wrong. But the fact that these people in senior levels of management, boardroom level, actual decision makers did nothing about this when the junior members who've got so much to lose said something, says a lot about how horrible and toxic the entertainment industry is like legitimately it does basically um enable and sort of like attract these flipping scumbags because there's a whole entire industry around just like if you're a star and you basically get numbers and you sell tickets and you get eyes on tv or you get you know streams and whatever it may be then all your bad behavior is somewhat excused that's the truth of the matter that's how horrible it's got which is why as maybe somewhat self-destructive and maybe somewhat um, blunt the whole me too movement is as a tool as an object as a you know as a tool to kind of take down the industry it kind of makes sense that it exists it kind of needed to exist even though there's been some you know um some fatalities along the line that are probably unfair in terms of them getting cancelled for what they did i think it was necessary you needed that blunt force trauma to the head to kind of shake up the industry in somewhat because if not this would have continued you know until the end of time basically alice was just 16 in 2006 when she first met russell brand he saw me and he'd asked what my business was there i'd just been to top shop he took the shopping bags from my hands and picked a dress out and he said, OK, you're going to wear that on a date with me. For Alice, Russell Brand, a self-proclaimed sex addict, was the first man she had had sex with. Jesus Christ. Bro. When everything was over, one of his friends came round to the house. They both drove me to the tube station. He reached his hand behind the car seat and was holding my hand behind the seat like my mum does when she's in the car. And it made me feel like, yeah, a little, I felt very small. I felt like a little kid. Alice describes being sexually assaulted. I was pushing him away, pushing him away, and he wasn't, he wasn't backing off at all. And so I ended up having to punch him really hard in the stomach to get him off. And then he, like, finally, then he, like, move fell backwards and i was crying and he said oh i only want to see your mascara run anyway from channel four brand moved to the bbc that was one of the most diciest parts of the documentary right um <laughs> because obviously involved a fucking minor in terms of a, a child basically at 16 don't care what our you know ages of consent are he was probably 30 in around that type of time so dating a 16 year old especially a 16 year old back then because if you're one of those guys that say oh age of consent age of consent all right cool because you're talking about kids now who have fed gmo foods and shit or who try to look older than what they are all right cool because of makeups in advance and all these tutorials online and how they dress and stuff and the access to good you know the access to certain styles of clothing i'll make you look a certain way all right whatever but let's think back to that time let's think back to the early 2000s the late 90s 16 year olds look like 16 year olds i'm sorry they did they look like actual children so for a 30 year old guy to be in a relationship with a 16 year old let alone take her virginity is insane insane especially to the point where you're not even like a i don't know there's something weird about guys who are into that sort of stuff but they're also not they're also not like kind or soft with their it's gross to say but you think about the crystalia thing um there's a can of crystalia basically dating some girl that was a teenager essentially allegedly and she said exactly the same thing 
it was like her first time um she's a child and he doesn't even deal with her with any sort of like subtlety right there is no sort of like kindness or loving or like just attention to de it's just it's just like rough and grown and aggressive and fast and it's just like bro like if you're gonna be into this at least be a gentleman about it at least try and show them a good time you know whatever it is i don't know what, what you're trying to do there but it's just the almost brutality of it is what kind of makes it really kind of stomach turning and obviously the fact that she's fucking 16 years of old, 16 years of age but you also need to say where were the parents in all of this where were this girl's parents that they let her go meet up with a 30 year old man because you'd imagine a girl at that age even if she's got best friends you'd imagine somehow the parents would know that she's dating somebody and they probably would get back to them that she's dating maybe an older guy um and the fact that these parents kind of let it pass let it slide is really really egregious that's the thing that really stands out to us you know the the elder ladies who who had kind of a career to kind of look after that gets kind of questionable and it's hard to kind of you know draw some lines on what's right or wrong but i think for the parents of the 16 year old they should look at themselves in the mirror with a lot of shame that they allowed their daughter to kind of be swept away by russell brand during the head the heights of his flipping you know celebrity knowing what he was like seeing what he kind of speaks about on tv his attitude the way he moves, all that stuff, right? Allowing yourself to be around someone like that is really, really egregious. Bringing his controversial, no holds barred broadcasting style to Radio 2. In 2008, Brand was forced to quit over an inappropriate prank call, but he was ready to take advantage of new opportunities in Hollywood. Nadia met Brand at a party and subsequently had consensual sex with him. On another occasion, she alleges, he raped her. I was out late and he happened to call me and say, I've had a really bad day, please come over. And I, at first I said, no, I'm not going, it's late. And he's like, please come, just come and cuddle with me. So then I gave in and I'm like, okay. He pushed me up against the wall. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I have a friend here and I, I want you to come into the bedroom. I'm like, no, that's not happening. We're not doing that. And I tried to get away from him. And at this point, he's grabbing at my, my underwear, pulling it to the side. I'm telling him to get off me and he won't get off. And he has that glazed look in his eye again. I was very distraught, trying to get out of the house with him being so much taller than me, like holding me up against the wall, pushing himself in me. I couldn't move. That same day, Nadia went to a local rape treatment center to report what had happened. She underwent tests, was given antibiotics and emergency contraception. But she says she couldn't face going to the police. When I went in for one of my first therapy sessions, I literally couldn't say the word rape. I had to keep saying sexually assaulted, but by the end of it, I was like, oh my God, he raped me. I That's where he's fucked, in my opinion. As crass and as despicable and disgusted um, as it is for him to be dating a 16 year old when he's 30 you know our ages of consent are what they are so legally he can't really be held up for that um even though her account wasn't great either right like there's, there's a can of her basically saying he forced his piece down her throat when she didn't want it and stuff like just mad shit right so he still comes out of it looking like a monster but the one that's really going to do some damage to him reputationally wise and something that people should kind of look at a bit deeply and kind of think about a lot especially if you're somebody sort of defending him is the rape charge or the rape accusation because i don't think most regular dudes who are sexually active have rape allegations to their names they may have occasions where they haven't been the best boyfriend they've been maybe emotionally abusive manipulative they haven't really been the most caring or loving people not attentive false promises all those things right they're not you know you couldn't you you're not gonna you're not gonna get anywhere if you try and say those things are anywhere near the level of severity that rape is right but they're obviously douchebag things which you should be 
aware of like you I don't, know, I don't know most women who have sense should think if a guy is out there hooking up with loads of women he probably nine times out of ten is going to be a douchebag it's just the nature of the game if you're going to be out there you know slanging dick and doing what you're doing as brendan says right but the rape thing is a heavy allegation especially concerning somebody who you already previously had dated or had a consensual sexual relationship with they're accusing you now of rape because they know the difference between having sex with you when they want to have sex with you and having sex with you when they don't want to have sex with you so if anything their account of this interaction should be way more believable than anybody else's really because they know you intimately and the fact that this is a second woman that said the whole glazed look over her eye because if you haven't watched the full documentary there's another woman too who had a similar interaction with russell i think he did the whole thing that whole creeps do where it's take off your trousers and run around or chase after the woman naked it's sort of like a textbook creep thing and she even says something along the lines of oh he had this glazed look over his face like he was just turning into some monster like he wasn't seeing he wasn't seeing me as a person and she had to kind of kept reminding him i'm i'm who i am i'm who i am whatever her name is and then he kind of suddenly snapped out of it and stopped but those accounts um from two different people saying the two these two similar phrases of hey glazed look over his eye and then this person in detail recounting what happened in the rape and then obviously having an account of you going to a rape center to go get treated and get some contraception and whatnot that is for me already a very dicey place to come from and the really annoying or the really sort of no no the really sort of like harmful thing for russell is that i don't think Again, I'm not. I haven't listened to his content too much because I felt like there was a period where he, he sort of like went off the reservation. He sort of had like a Jordan Peterson moment where he just started to get a bit insufferable. I stopped listening to him. Like Jordan Peterson had a moment where he was somewhat enjoyable to listen to. Right, some of the Bible stories, just some of the accounts of or some of the speeches around taking personal responsibility and all these sort of things. Although they should be obvious when you're a dude sort of like losing your way they are quite helpful and they did kind of help me at the time but then there was a point where even before i even knew he's got you know hooked on flipping benzos he just went off the reservation and i feel like russell brown had the same thing so i don't really sure what he talks about nowadays but i would imagine he probably hasn't spoken in detail about how crazy he was back in the day he probably doesn't want to speak about it because he doesn't want people to you know think about him in that way anymore and just look at him being the yogi gandhi type of guy he is now but I think what's really hurt him is he never really spoke about it. He never really spoke openly about that sort of stuff post it happening or him being this new person that he is. So it kind of always looked like he was maybe hiding something. And now that all this stuff has come out and you then try to preempt it by putting out that rambly two minutes and a half video where you try to make it seem like it was a big, you know, um, concerted effort by the mainstream media to take you down because you're this crazy truth teller. And then the accusations come out that you've been accused of rape and this account seems to be kind of legit. It's not looking good for you, bruv. It's not looking good for you. I worship divine sexual female energy. Yes, thanks, thanks, thanks. I'm saying that not only because it's true, but also because it's nearly the end of the show now. And I know if I say stuff like that about women and divine sexual energy at the end of the evening, there's no way I ain't getting laid after the show tonight. <laughs> Dispatches put a freedom of information request to Channel 4, asking how many complaints it had received about Russell Brand. But Channel 4 refused to release the information, saying they were under no legal obligation to do so. Oh. The programme asked the BBC if complaints had been received. They too declined to answer, citing data protection laws. Then I'll read a little bit about the article here, courtesy of Times, that kind of speaks a little bit about it also. Um, this is courtesy of the Times. It says as follows, Russell Brand accused of rape, sexual assaults and abuse. Um, it's obviously got a very sinister leading picture there that's been shown everywhere. But this basically came out, I think, on a Saturday before the documentary came out. And it kind of essentially broke the internet on my side, the internet on my side of social media, especially in the UK, because a lot of people had been sort of like, you know, debating about who it could be when the first initial rumours came out out people to guess correctly with russell brand but when it did come out the story it kind of you know obviously um was there in black and white so the uh, times article says as follows the, co the comedian and actor russell brand has been accused of rape sexual assaults and emotional abuse during a seven-year period at the height of his fame 
four women have alleged sexual assaults between 2006 and 20, 2013 while he was a presenter on BBC Radio 2 and Channel 4 and then an actor in Hollywood films. Others have made a range of accusations about Brand's controlling, abusive and predatory behaviour. Brand denied the allegations and said his relationship had all been consensual. The findings come after a joint investigation by the Sunday Times, the Times and Channel 4 dispatches. One woman alleges that the Brand raped her against her uh, against a wall in a Los Angeles home. She was treated at a rape crisis centre on the same day, according to her medical records. Text messages showing the hours that leaving the house, she told Brand that she had been scared by him and felt taken advantage of, adding, when a girl says no it means no brand replied saying he's very sorry a second woman alleges that brand assaulted her when she was when he was 31 and she was 16 and still at school she said that he referred to her as the child during an emotionally abusive and controlling relationship that lasted for about three months and brand once forced his penis down her throat making her choke she says that she tried to push him off and he said he had to punch him she said she had to punch him in the stomach to make him stop a third woman claims that he sexually assaulted her while she was working with him in los angeles and that he threatened to take legal action if she told anyone else about her allegations the fourth described being sexually assaulted by brand and him um, being physically emotionally abusive uh, all towards her all said they all felt ready to talk only after being approached by reporters several said that they felt compelled to do so given brand's newfound prominence on online wellness for influencer with millions of followers on youtube and other sites that's the thing that's a bit sketchy isn't it the only way to explain why the journalists are the ones that are pushing this story, not the victims, would be that in the UK, we have this thing called super injunctions where essentially you can silence the media and the press from reporting on a crime or something heinous that you've done. You could basically silence them because maybe they haven't got all bits of the evidence. Um, there's nothing to prove you've done it. I don't know. But it's a really dubious thing we have here in the country anyway. And I guess these things only last. They have a, they have a term time, right? Uh, or duration that they sort of last. And there's a theory out there that these super injunctions all ran out at the same time. And that's why these reporters and these journalists went out to hit their story because they knew when you think about what happened with Harvey Weinstein and you think about the other big viral uh, Me Too cancellation sort of stories, they know that even though this is good for the victims, it's also good for them. Clicks, engagement, views and stuff is through the roof. I'm sure this Dispatches documentary about Russell Brand probably got the most views of any program ever on Channel 4, right? Channel 4 is fuck, it's a dead channel for the most part. Um, there's not a lot of really good things on there that I can think of. So those things are going to probably add that to give them more incentive to go ahead with the story, even though they're going to paint it as like we're here for the victims it's you're going to think it's going to be somewhat self-serving but it's obviously done for a good cause people don't really pay more attention to it but this last line sounds a bit sinister and a bit weird i think that's why i mentioned before it's like if somebody has made amends with their actions because again i don't know if, if russell brand's ever come out and said anything directly about his time being a lafario pua wannabe type looking guy i don't know if he's ever said that or if he just kind of let his lifestyle and his change of lifestyle and his new perspective on the world be the thing that kind of speaks for him. But if he has had, if he has, sorry, made amends and he's tried to course correct and he's tried to be a better person, should you now, 13 or 10 years after the fact, come out and say, hey, this happened to me before? Like, what is your incentive there? If the person's tried to, you know, it's tried to make amends, they've tried to be a better person is no one allowed forgiveness or should you just be always punished for your past crimes or maybe the fact that he didn't get punished for past crimes is why they're saying it now i don't really know you know that's the only thing that's a bit of a makes me feel a little bit away when i read this sort of article but the rest of it the rape you know it's basically he's done in it it kind of is what it is but no actually he's not done he's not done he's got a youtube fan base i keep forgetting that in this era of cancel culture or of me too we've now seen that apart from cancel culture and me too not really affecting people who already got privileged wealth and whatever it may be i think we've also seen that if you're somebody that's built your own audience i think for the most part your audience probably knows you more than you know yourself so they're willing to put up with your fuck shit because they enjoy your content and most likely unless it's something really egregious they're not going to jump ship and i think a really simple explanation for it could be that there's not a lot of good content out there that you personally like. I don't think a lot of us watch many different content creators. We may watch different clips, but we're not watching loads of different people. There's people that we trust with our, with, with our time. Our time is valuable. Our time is precious. So when you trust somebody with your time, 
it's very hard for you to then end up not trusting them with your time so if they do some fuck shit you're still going to be there for them and in nowadays in this era of content creation or putting yourself out there on social and shit most fans know who you are anyway so they're okay with your fuck shit um and most fans just are fans of you. They don't care about that shit. They just don't care. We've already seen it with Chris D'Elia. I think everybody thought after this article, after this documentary, after this woman coming out as an interview, that'll be it, that'll be it. And we've seen, not really. He, he definitely has lost some fans, but he's still got a decent enough fan base to tour, to have a successful podcast, to sell merch. All those things still exist. He might not be able to ever go back into Hollywood, but in terms of you know have, requiring you to go work at fucking Tesco's, that doesn't exist anymore. It, there's no such thing, um, especially if you have your own fan base. So I think Russell's perfectly fine. Um, even if it comes out, there's more accounts of him raping people. I think there is going to be a certain segment of his fan base who are definitely going to buy into the idea that he's being targeted by the mainstream media anyway. And there's going to be some who just don't believe that he would do what they're accusing him of. It continues, says the others have accused him of physical and emotional abuse, sexual harassment and bullying. Most of the women who do not know each other have chosen to remain anonymous. Others, um, over sorry, the past few years, reports have interviewed hundreds of sources who knew or worked with Brand, ex-girlfriends and their families, comedians and other celebrities, people who worked with him on radio and TV and seen himself at the BBC and Channel 4 and other media organisations. Along with these interviews, reporters have been seen private emails, text messages, submitted freedom of information requests, viewed medical and therapists notes scrutinized brands books and interviews and watched and listened to hundreds of hours of his shows on bbc channel 4 and youtube to corroborate allegations brand who is now 48 has managed to maintain his fame for the past two decades through reinvention sorry first as a stand-up comedian known for his debauchery before becoming a primetime channel 4 host a bbc radio star hollywood actor and most recently a wellness guru and an anti-establishment influencer with millions of followers online throughout his career brands material has acknowledged his sex addiction and he's often publicly joked about his predatory behavior and sex life so he's basically admitted it in the past and he's admitted it now so again it's like you know again without the rape allegations he probably will be fine but with the rape allegations it makes all this stuff null, null and void but we continue there were r rumors of more sinister behavior said to be discussed as an open secret by senior tv and radio executives and among male comedians who warned each other of his behavior male comedian oh sorry i thought it said male comedian so female comedian who warned each other about his behavior but the women involved previously felt unable to speak out these stories sorry their stories now told publicly for the first time shine a light on brand's mistreatment of women behind closed doors and on the industries their stories are now told sorry wow. Their stories now told publicly for the first time shine a light on Brand's mistreatment of women behind closed doors and on the industries that enabled him. Okay, I'm glad that they're saying that because that's the thing that stuck out to me the most. The industry definitely enabled this guy to get away with absolute murder. And I think those people who did that should be held accountable. Not just as accountable because obviously they didn't do the act, but they need to be held somewhat accountable because this that's the real part that doesn't get spoken about enough monsters are always going to exist in my personal opinion i think you cannot rid the world of evil monsters that's why you have good people to counteract the evil but then you can't have good people surrounded in you know you can't have evil persons surrounded by good people who are not brave enough to speak out because it might hamper their own career they're not willing to look out for people and victims who might suffer at the hands of that evil person and never recover again we don't want that to happen so you have to be brave and say something i understand it's not easy but it really does need to be stressed that that should be something that people try and do more often than not because that's the only way you stop this shit you won't ever rid the world of evil and horrible people but the way you stop them doing things to more people is that you speak up but again, maybe it's easier said than done. It continues. The Times and Sunday Times gave Brand eight days within which to reply to detailed allegations, including information to enable him to recall the alleged instances. Lawyers for Brand initially said that they were not in a position to provide any response to the allegations because he had posed a large litany of questions. I'm sorry, we opposed large litany of questions and intentionally chose to anonymize the names of the women. Why does that even matter if they're anonymous, though? Why would it matter? Does, or maybe that's what he's trying to say like i had so many interactions with women over the years he literally can't remember if he actually ever did rape somebody which already is making you look insane but i don't know why he would worry or why it would be bothered they're, they're anonymous if you know you didn't do it just say you didn't do it and then if you did do it and you're sorry say you're sorry 
But I guess, you know, he probably not, he wants to, he doesn't want to do it either because it's going to make him look guilty. I don't know. Who knows? Um, they categorize this as a deliberate and part of a preconceived strategy aimed at damaging their client. They said that the publication was a concerted campaign and their client believes that there is a deeply concerning agenda to all of this, namely the fact that he is an alternative media broadcaster competing with mainstream media. Pressed to provide a full response, the same lawyer did not apply. We've given further opportunity to respond. Sorry, when given further opportunity to respond, Brian broadcast a statement on his YouTube channel saying amidst his litany of astonishing and rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. He says relationships have always been consensual and he accused the mainstream media of a coordinated attack and said that there were witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives. The Sunday Times asked his lawyers for more of the evidence that he referred to but no answer was provided so that's basically that gives you an overview of it i'm not going to go through the whole entire thing because it's kind of long but I'm, I'm hope from what i've kind of said to you via the clips i provided that you can kind of get an idea on what the documentary is about i do recommend you watch it because it is quite interesting to watch the whole entire thing but i do think when you watch it there'll be a lot more questions coming through your head outside of the okay cool he's probably guilty of this because you know the stuff that he's done that's egregious is obvious to see what he's done but there are a lot of questions to be asked about the people involved and what they allowed to kind of slide and the people who flat out did you know refuse his advances but then saw him do it to other people and didn't report it the parents of the 16 year old the women that kind of got abused first then got in a relationship with him afterwards um the executives that turned a blind eye all these people who are kind of involved in the story but also have very dubious ways about how they went about things you ha you're gonna have a lot of questions about it also but in general in general the worst thing to come out of this is just that you know he clearly was doing a lot of dirt back in the day it wasn't just what we saw on tv because on tv he was painted as this like lovable charming guy right he was kind of essentially andrew tate before andrew tate he was doing all that stuff and you know I, I remember even for a short while he was a bit of a idol to the pua guys right the pickup artist community um, which has completely just you know been completely demolished actually if i'm not mistaken by that one documentary again on ukt i forgot what the name of it was that completely tore that industry apart but he was kind of a loosely associated with that group of people also and yeah people just saw him as a guy that women tend to like he tend to like the women back he was always very flirtatious and shit and for the most part none of the women seem to object there's even a video i saw in a documentary of him I've, i don't know who the older lady is but he's talking to some older lady when he's filming a movie and he's walking her through the studio where he's filming it and he's touching her up he's kissing her he's holding her hand and she's absolutely loving it like you can see she's loving every part of it because at that time he was such a huge celebrity he was so famous back then people don't understand how much of a big deal russell brand was back then and you know it didn't work out for him in the end now we probably know why but a lot of women were willing and able willing and you know and able or able and willing whatever that term is to you know drop their panties for russell and that's the thing that really is concerning or weird about this whole thing is like he had all these hordes of older ladies who would have gladly taken him up on his offer and that wasn't enough he had to go to crew members he had to go to teenagers he had to do it to people that didn't want it like that's the thing that really is like fuck man you're you're a bit of a bad dude then isn't it right you're a bit of a bad dude 